Hey guys, Ben here on behalf of Multi Hole Company and welcome back to my channel. I'm here in lovely Rio Dulce, Guatemala where I've just wrapped up shooting on my latest listing, Zia. She's a Switch 51 performance cruising catamaran lying here in Rio Dulce, Guatemala, available for immediate sale. As always, I'll have a full spec sheet down in the description with a full equipment list and an updated set of photos that I've just finished taking. So as always, thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the tour. All right, we're here in lovely Rio Dulce, Guatemala looking at the 2002 uh, Switch Sud Composites Switch 51 catamaran owner version by the name of Zia, a boat that you may recognize if you've read the previous owner's blog. This is a boat that was built in France by Sud Composites in, in the early to late 2000s and was sold worldwide by Multi Hole Company. It's a VPLP design, the same designers that did all of the Lagoon catamarans and still do the Lagoon catamarans to this day. It is a historically important boat in that it is also one of the boats that convinced Phil Berman not to design the balance with dual outboard helms. Now that's a statement you may find confusing since after all, where are the dual helms? Well, the Switch 51 was a semi-custom catamaran and I mean like a real semi-semi-custom catamaran, more custom than a katana, so that you could have either a single helm like Zia or you could have dual helms. Now, most of them were built dual helms, but Zia is a single helm. Up here you have uh, metal, uh, metal davits that mount a vinyl soft top. And this vinyl soft top has actually Dyneema webbing underneath. So it's more sturdy to walk on than a typical vinyl soft top. On either side, you have stern seating, which is another interesting feature. The Traveler runs along the entire stern here. You have a pair of metal davits bolted to the transom. On top of your dinghy you have uh, three solar panels, they're 175 watts each. And an apex dinghy with these uh, little Yamaha 15 Enduros, they're very popular here in Rio. On the port side sugar scoop you've got a swim ladder that folds up or down. And beneath me is the port side Yanmar engine. You'll notice all of the uh, all of the winches on this boat are Anderson winches. This is a two-speed winch, as well as uh, and there's also a pair of one-speed winches. But you know, I love Anderson winches. They're nice, shiny, stainless steel, and basically indestructible. We'll pop over to the starboard mechanical space. You can enjoy the natural sounds of the Rio Dulce ducks. Actually, the owners just keep them for, uh, you know, eggs. But inside the starboard mechanical space, you have your Yanmar engine and a small uh, Fisher Panda generator. Although certainly wide sugar scoops like this are not quite the style anymore, I do appreciate that they provide just a really nice opening for you to get in and out of the, the engine room. Moving forward, you can again see that VPLP influence. And being this is a performance cruiser, dagger boards are a must. I like as well how the boards are marked for height. So you can see what exactly your draft is. Looking at the foredeck, we've got dolphin seats on either side, a split trampling with a, uh, a loose net style, a nice big oversized rock net anchor and you also have a, a chafe guard that runs across your trampoline, an important safety feature to make sure your trampolines don't wear out. The anchor locker is on the starboard side and storage is on the port. Some of my more astute viewers, again, may be noticing the similarities to the Lagoon 55. Not a coincidence. Take a look at the rig. It's a triple spreader rig with two shrouds on either side. And my uh, more astute viewers may have also noticed that the rigging on this boat is rather unique in that it is not 1x19 metal, it is Dyneema. Why is this the case? Well, um, this is mostly, uh, again, it's a performance feature. It saves on weight, but it also, uh, you know, the boat has spent most of its life in Guatemala and Belize or Honduras. It's very humid down here and the owners felt it would be better 
to use Dyneema than 1x19 swage fittings that can rust and split apart very easily. This cabling here is just a safety feature for lightning strikes. Uh, it may not necessarily save your electronics. Uh, unfortunately, the last lightning strike did take out the electronics and the lithium battery bank, but it will prevent hull damage at the very least, which is important. This boat has two four stays. You have a baby stay that uses a profurl and a larger four stay that runs on a Harkin. I'll draw your attention to the bowsprit, which is a fold down bowsprit. Make sure that you don't get stuck paying extra marina fees. You can retract your bowsprit back up. You've got two sets of pulleys on either side, uh, Dyneema whiskers down there, and they run to a pair of jammers, and you just either can crank the bowsprit up or uh, leave it down. Uh, there are two storage lockers on either side. They are actually quite large. So plenty of space for buoys and uh, boat hooks and other assorted materials. We have the port side dagger board up top here. And I'll notice that the side decks are fairly clear. I can walk past the uh, rigging without having to do many gymnast any gymnastics. Into the cockpit pit, you'll see that the uh, interior of the cockpit floor is covered with teak decking. The main sheet runs through a pair of jammers here with another stainless steel Anderson winch. You've got an L-shaped seating area with a teak table. Beneath uh, this, this part of the seating, there's storage for snorkel gear. And here you have your helm station, again single helm. Owners have added a custom uh, wooden footrest for long passages. You don't have to leave your feet dangling. The boat did have uh, Rain Marine electronics, but like I said, the aforementioned lightning strike, um, uh, well, frankly, we don't think they really work anymore. And well, it's gonna be up to you to uh, make the call for what comes next. Looking forward, uh, you can't really stand up at the helm station as again, Soft top is in the way, so seated only. And just has a regular bulkhead helm. This window in the back here as well opens up directly toward the uh, nav station. And now we will make our way inside. All right, entering forward. First off, you have a nice big U-shaped settee. This table uh, can also fold over to uh, cut the size of it in half. You have a nav station facing the cockpit with a fold-out swivel seat. And off to port, you have a pair of cold storage units. These can be configured as either fridges or freezers. Microwave up top, storage unit, uh, space for your trash, a dual basin sink, four burner propane stove, and opposite all that, you have your countertop space and uh, storage racks. I know that this garden hose does look a bit funky, but uh, that's the salt water, and frankly, anything that isn't plastic would probably just rust into oblivion, so that's the solution the owners have gone for. This boat is a three cabin, uh, but it is a two head, so the guests share a head. The aft guest stateroom consists of an athwartship berth. You have storage under the bed, a pair of uh, windows, and all of the hatches on this boat as well are Goyat, French manufacturer another swivel out uh, seat and desk and three storage areas uh, one there's storage under here as well as well as storage underneath the bed the guest head is a wet head one storage locker up here manual flush uh, toilet, and your wand shower, as well as dispensers for uh, soap, shampoo, and conditioner. Moving forward, you'll find storage on either side of this passageway. The forward guest head, uh, the forward guest stateroom, uh, sorry, is a V-berth. And unfortunately, 
the uh, Switch 51s, some of the hatches on them did suffer from this issue. There was actually another Switch 51 by the name of Beach House. The owners used to know that, uh, however, he came up with a solution for that that I'm happy to share with the buyer. And I just like to uh, draw your attention to the woodwork and just really outside of a couple problem spots I know is still very nice. You know, many of these boats are approaching 20 years old and outside of uh, a couple issues here and there, they still show very well. You know, the owners that have them really do try to take as best possible care for them as possible. All right, we'll finish up in voiceover mode so I can spare you the ambient background noise of a Guatemalan thunderstorm. One of the things I really like about the Switch 51 compared to, you know, some of the boats of the era is that it does have a lot more space and headroom. You'll notice that to get into the owner's suite, if you're 6'2 like me, you only need to duck about an inch and a half. In the owner suite, just like the aft guest, we have another queen sized thwartship berth with a swivel out seat and a desk. There's uh, storage underneath the bench next to the desk, as well as beneath the latch and inside the uh, dual opening doors. All of the opening doors on the Switch 51s use this push button system. You have another pair of windows as well as three fans. Uh, Zia does not have AC. The owners are true Guatemalans. The owner's head on this boat uh, occupies the entire forward section. You have one more window and uh, the toilets on this boat are uh, Wilcox Crittenden is the brand that I was told. And, you know, I'm told by the owner they're nearly indestructible. Very old fashioned, but reliable. You have a laundry hamper next to the head. And the shower in the owner's head consists of a fully enclosed shower, so it's a dry head. And next to the shower, you have a sink and vanity. As we pass back into the salon, you've got the electrical panel off to the right, and the water maker cabinet is beneath that. All right, that will wrap it up for the tour of the Switch 51 owner's version, Zia. I'll, as always, if you have any questions or comments, my full contact info is down in the description. If you like the video, leave a like. If you dislike the video, leave a dislike. Feel free to leave a comment. And until next time, I'll see you later.